Hello producers, it's Özgün here and today we are gonna talk about my mastering chain. I will show you how to master an EDM track and you can apply this to any track actually. If you're ready, let's get into that tutorial. So we are inside the FL studio right now. I just put one of my unfinished tracks and I wanted to show you my mastering chain and how do I master my tracks. So I will show you a really really small preview of the track. So, it's a big room track and as you can see, it's already clipping in the mix down process. So, this is actually a problem. But since we are working with 32 bits, the clipping is not a big problem for us because there are some more headroom in the 32 bits when we compare it to 24 bits. Here is a thing to do. Just load the track in your DAW and normalize it. That's why. The highest part will be 0 dB when you normalize the track. That means if I make it minus, nine, minus 6 dB, the track will be mastering ready. I will have enough headroom for my mastering. So I will do it like this. I will press Ctrl L and it will assign my track to an empty mixer channel. this and I will lower the volume to minus 6 decibels. It's a bit tricky. Yes, that's all. Now my track is hitting maximum to minus 6 decibels when I do that because I normalize the track and it lower the volume and the highest peak was right now is 0 dB. I routed to a mixer channel and in this mixer channel I made it, I lowered the volume 6 dB and everything is good for mastering right now. Okay, I start my mastering chain with an equalizer. I always cut like 30 Hz because most of the systems doesn't have 30 Hz or below. It will give me a freedom to boost my tracks even higher in terms of volume. And I will create one more high pass filter to here, but this one will be only cutting sides. And I will cut the size sides till 100 hertz because I want my base area is fully mono. It will help the track to bang in the club systems because most of the club systems got mono sub. After that we can create a low pass filter at 20 kilohertz. Right now our job with the equalizer is finished. If my track got some resonating frequencies, I should dip them. Let's search for them. And I usually just make a dynamic EQ and dipping if a frequency is resonating too much. Oh, I missed it. Like this. Just 2 or 3 dB is enough. If you need to lower some frequency more than maybe 4 dB, 5 dB, you should probably go back to mixing process and fix that problem. I think that's good right now. So secondly, I always put saturator to my second chain. In this project, mostly in big room, I use NLS bus stereo 
it really give a nice crispiness to the track. I choose Neva preset. It's a really good mixing console and I if noise is on, I turn it off and I give drive like 6. You should find your sweet spot in every track. Then I just go to the loudest part of my track and I usually use glue compressor to tame the dynamics and glue my track together. If you want you can use SSL too and there are plenty of glue compressors but this one is my favorite. So here's my mastering settings, you can copy that. It's not the fastest attack because I want my kick, clap and other drums, all my transients to pass through from the compressor. And I just release it so fast, 2 to 1 ratio, range full. Uh, if you use your range 100 to 80, like this, these areas, it means this compressor is acting like the real SSL simulation. Uh, so that's why I'm putting it full. So the makeup will be the same amount of the gain reduction that compressor does. So let's raise the threshold and see how it behaves. And I will make make the gain to match the gain reduction. So there will be no volume changes when I bypass it. You see how it's making the track up front and glue it together just one big body. I love it. This is optional actually. If you don't like your kick and bass correlation, if you're, if they are still not glued together, not hitting like a big gigantic fist, you can use this technique. So find the sub area by soloing it. Then I will keep my range to minus 6, I won't touch it and I will just lower my threshold till I got constant gain reduction at six, minus 6 dB. And then I will make the ga gain 6 dB so we won't have any volume changes but my sub area kick and bass will be glued together perfectly. So this really helps on mastering if your kick and bass lack of punch, lack of power, you can use this technique to glue them together. And then I will work on stereo imaging. I already make my bass area mono in here, but maybe with this I can work, I can make my track more stereo in the highs. So I will just play the track and click learn. So I don't want this much area to be mono, so I will lower it like 100 hertz and make it mono. Then I can work 
around like this. Just a tiny touch. And you should solo them and work on them and tweak them until you're satisfied. But the trick is, if you do this on headphones, especially in closed back headphones, you probably will be mistaken on your stereo imaging, gain staging. That's why you should try to make the stereo enhancements in your master with real actual studio speakers or open back headphones. Just a tip for you. And finally, I use a maximizer. Any kind of maximizer will work. The selling part is in here determines the highest peak of your track. Every platform got their own specifications, their own standards. For example, as I know, YouTube is asking for minus one dB headroom when you send the track to them. You can find this online. And there is one website I will show you in the end of the tutorial that you can check if your track will be reduced in terms of volume when you upload it such platforms. Let's make it minus 0.1 for now. And I will just raise the ratio until I satisfied with the volume. And I will see how much I can push the track. For this, let's put a span in here and see how much loops we get and RMS. Actually, we can put uh, this one. It will show the loops. For example, Spotify is asking for minus 14 loops at top, at maximum. If you send them more than that, louder than that, they will just limit your track and your track will probably sound different in the Spotify. So every platform got their own standards. You should consider it when you're sending or uploading your track to such platforms. <laughs> So that was all for the mastering chain and now let's see how our track will look like in waveform. I will just render it. Okay, let's see. I will just right click here and choose multi waveform. As you can see, it's really boosted, but I didn't kill all the dynamics. We could boost it maybe even more, but for me, that's really enough. There's no advantage to push the track to the, its limits. So when I upload this to Spotify or any platform, even this will be lowered in terms of volume. Let's see how much penalty do we get. I'm not sure why that doesn't work in Firefox. That's okay. As you can see, when we upload this track in YouTube, it will be sound like this. This site it really helps how your track will sound in such platforms. Uh, the iTunes one is estimated because there are some other algorithms going on in the iTunes and Apple Music, but these are true values 
and you can check your track in this website Do and don't get surprised and don't question yourself why my track is so silent I made it really loud mastering after you upload it. Today was it. We talk about my mastering chain. If you want to add something or give me feedbacks about this, please let me know in the comments and please like, comment, subscribe and thanks for watching. See you on the next video.